going on today fam so we are back in today today we're going to be installing a brand new axle on our trailer so our trailer actually needs a brand new axle because uh when i was towing um a truck um the weight wasn't centered and it pretty much just ate up one of the hubs to no return so we had to buy a new axle i'm gonna show y'all exactly what we got so right here was an old hub it just got all chewed up it's just no more good pads are trash so i said instead of taking a risk just putting new bearings up on the damn spindle we might as well just go ahead and get a new axle assembly so this is what we did here so this is a tk trailer full axle assembly um this is a 95 inch from hub to hub 80 from a spring perch to spring perch 3500 pound axle from tk trailers all right so i ordered this uh full axle with um so this has the electric brake kit um and all that from amazon okay paid about 500 and some change for this shipped to my door um so not a bad deal i feel um and it's gonna get me back up on the road so that's what i really need um so if you already bought your trailer um axle then you can go ahead and skip past this part but if you didn't yet so before you go and buy just any old trailer axle there's a couple things you need to know one so does your trailer have electric brakes if it does right then it will have these uh wires coming out of it okay that'll let you know that you have electric brakes right there okay so you're gonna need to buy um a axle for electric brakes if you don't and you want to convert then you need to buy one as well for electric brakes as well but if you don't and you just want a dead axle um then that's a lot simpler and it'll also be a bit cheaper so make sure you buy the right thing secondly uh, so you need to know the actual length of the axle okay so my bed of my trailer is six foot by ten inches all right so this is a basic um axle for uh a seven thousand pound trailer all right so each of the axles is rated for three uh three thousand five hundred pounds okay and this axle is actually designed to fit underneath a trailer bed that's six foot by 10 inches wide so this is the actual um actual that i'll need for my trailer so just make sure y'all do your research third thing you need to know is your actual bolt pattern for your studs okay you don't want to order one with the wrong bolt pattern mine is five by five the most popular ones are like five by four five by four point five and five point five so you can actually measure um in between your studs to actually get that measurement there's videos out there on it there's articles on it as well so make sure that y'all actually do your research there but let's get into it so first thing you need to do is jack your trailer up all right so what i did was um i raised up my front jack right here suitably then i came with a jack then i jacked up my second axle enough to get the trailer off the ground and I put my actual um, jack stand uh, so right underneath the second axle, okay? Right underneath the second axle. So that raised up my first axle enough to be able uh, to actually get um, that's my first axle wheels off the ground. So did that. Um, second thing, right? You need to make sure that your axle is orientated the right way. So your axle is gonna have these metal tabs. These are gonna be facing down, okay? These need to be facing down. Then to know which hub assembly is your left and right hub, or just cause you wanna have the right one cause they're not, um, sort, of the, sort of the hub placement matters. So you're gonna look at where the wire actually comes out of the back of your hub assembly, okay? So your wire, should be chasing towards the rear, or so the rear of the vehicle, okay? So when you're looking at the back plate, okay, the wire is on your right side, okay? And then that's gonna be your right trailer hub or your passenger trailer hub. Adversely, we're coming um, to the driver's side hub and then we see that the wire's coming out of the left side, all right? So this is gonna be my driver's trailer hub. You want your wires to be going towards the rear of the trailer. All right, that's gonna save you the time of just having to take apart this whole uh, brake assembly, all the brands and all that stuff. Cause that's, you know, just cause that kind of goes to defeat the purpose of buying um, a axle that's already pre-built. So from here, then we're gonna move underneath the vehicle and I'll show you what's next. All right, so now we're underneath the trailer. I've already uh, taken off the 
tape uh, that was holding on a sort of wire to the axle, just let that hang free. So it's pretty simple what we need to do. So my goal is to try and actually drop the axle, but leave the wires connected. And then I'll come and bring in a new axle underneath. Um, and then I'll actually go and just put the wires on where they need to go. So that way, you know, makes it easy, painless. But I'm gonna take off this front bolt right here. The front bolt right there, all right, on both sides. That's gonna cause the front of this leaf to come down and that will bring the whole axle down like that. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the four bolts up on each side to actually hold the axle um, up to the leaf springs. So that's what I'm gonna start with right there. Um, I have an impact. I definitely recommend using some PB blaster or something on these bolts. I let them soak for a little bit just cause you can tell they were pretty rusty. So I'll go ahead and knock that out. And then we'll continue moving on. Yeah, hold on. All right, y'all, so I got all of these off right here. Um, so my new axe was actually came with new U-bolts. Uh, oh, I forgot, I just hit my camera. It uh, came with new U-bolts and then the U-bolt plate right there, along with nuts. But, uh, so the axle is actually uh, free and it can move. I'm gonna try to remove the axle without actually dropping this front leaf first, but if I can't, then we'll have to, uh, I remove those bolts right there. As far as the wiring, pretty simple. So, being the fact that it's just a magnet, um, there's two wires that come out of the brake drum itself, which I'll show you on the new brake drum, drum in the light. But it doesn't matter which side the positive and negative goes to. So you can hook it up any way you want to. What's important is the way that your wiring already is, you know, the positive's right here, the negative's right here. So you just have to make sure those wires stay together. And when you put it back, uh, you make sure that those wires are the same way. So looking at the other side of this, same thing here. We got the positive and then we got the negative side. I've already uh, removed both of the green wires right there though. But one wire will have to go into the black bundle and then one wire will have to go inside the white bundle. And then, um, and then my brakes will uh, just operate so the same way I did it did before. It'll be like nothing ever happened. So what I'm gonna have to do now is actually go to remove this front bolt um, on the front of the leaf spring. Then that will make this whole thing drop down like this. And I'll be able to just roll out this whole axle in front of the vehicle. Might be a little bit easier that way anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out right quick. All right, y'all. <clears throat> so we are about to go ahead to remove a sort of leaf spring over here. Hey, I'm recording. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm trying to go ahead to remove uh, just a leaf spring over here. I did the other side already, but it was like super duper seized. So what I did actually um, was I came and then I took a, a 21 mil. It's for my trailer. Then I got this extension right here, half inch um, breaker bar. And then I took my trailer handle right here. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's how I farted. But, uh, <laughs> hey, I had a pumpkin empanada and it's going through me. And then I put the end of the actual handle on here just so I could break this bolt because it was seized inside of there. So. Want to break that first, make the job a lot easier. All right, there we go. Now that's not seized anymore. So from there, I can actually use my DeWalt Impact in order to get it off. It makes things a lot easier. Um, if you're doing this job at home, can you do it with hand tools? Yes, but if your trailer is older, God, I definitely advise you have a impact because it's gonna make your life a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot easier. So 
I'm gonna take my adjustable right here and put it on the nut on the other side. And hopefully I'll just be able to impact this off quick, fast, and then it hurt. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to get the appropriate size um, wrench, so I'll be back. All right, so let's try this again. Got the right size wrench up on it. Hopefully it captures it the way we need it to. jack stands underneath the axle that way the whole axle didn't just fall on the floor you know just make it a little bit more uh i said it's a little bit more controlled the whole thing there we go all right so i'll show y'all what i got going on here so you can see got the two jack stands right here uh, just supporting the old axle so now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take the old axle out uh, from underneath the trailer. Then we can roll in our new one. She's having way too much fun with these bubbles, but she does not like the impact at all. <laughs> Uh, so back to the task at hand. So as y'all just saw, so got the new axle um, just set up on the jack stands. Uh, it's just me. So doing it with the jack stands makes it so, um, so if you're just one person, uh, that you can do this job by yourself. But now what we're actually going to do is go to put back on the leaf springs. All right, so we're gonna actually put back on our leaf springs, but the goal with this is, is to actually um, not put the axle on the leaves until the leaf springs are back put in. So that's gonna just be able to support you and just make the job a lot easier. Quick tip there to help you out, rotate it so that the actual plate that sits on the leaf springs is rotated up. And once you get the leaf springs in, then you can go ahead and rotate it down and you can get the axle seated to where it's actually supposed to be. All right, y'all, so now that we got our, I saw our leaf springs back in, right? So now I went on ahead and then I lined up the axle. So there's a little hole there that the axle, um, so bracket actually uh, sits on and then it keeps it placed where it's supposed to be just so the axle doesn't move left to right or forward or backwards. So once the axle's sitting there, then it's not gonna move around at all. So now it's time to go ahead to install your U-boats. So. Your axle should have came with new U-boats, new plate, and new nuts, but if it didn't, so you can use your old ones. But since mine did, I'm gonna go ahead and use the new hardware. All right, so all you have to do is pretty simple here, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So go ahead and put your U-boats over. All right, so right on the bottom, of your bottom leaf pack right here is gonna be the nut, all right? So you're gonna put the middle part of this bracket right on that nut. But we're gonna go ahead and get our U-boats placed where they need to be. So I try to do everything by hand first just because it's gonna make it just a little bit quicker. That way the impact ain't got that much to do. We'll just be done. But new hardware makes things easy. So. Now that we got everything snug, then we can go and then we can go to impact it in a cross pattern. All right. The reason why you want to do this in a cross pattern is just like your lug nuts. Um, it just easily uh, distributes um, the torque being added to it. So just better do that way. So we'll go ahead and tighten it up with a star pattern and we'll be good to go. double check make sure everything's good so once you got that done up on both sides now it's time to turn your attention um to your wiring and once you get that all wired up you can hook up your trailer and you can test your brakes so i'm gonna go ahead and get my wiring started all right y'all so it has gotten dark but pretty much what i did 
um, was I went on ahead, I rewired stuff where it went before. Uh, just make sure you take pictures um, of your wiring or scheme that you had before just so you can match it back. Remember um, that it doesn't matter which one you choose to be the positive or negative, but the wire that runs from your left drum to your right drum over there, it does actually need to be the same wire that you pick to be the negative, needs to be the same negative on that side. And when you pick to be positive, it needs to be positive on the adjacent side as well. So I got the hub installed. These come uh, pre-greased and all that stuff. So don't do, so don't need to really do anything there. All I need to do is put the wheels back on and test the brakes. So I'm gonna throw my wheels back on. Um, I'm not gonna test the brakes in this video. But yeah, and then we'll close it out from there. All right, so the trailer is back on the ground. Um, everything went well. Uh, so I had family over today and there was a lot of distractions. So it took me a lot longer than it really should have, but not a eat. I mean, it's not a difficult um, thing to do at all. I think that anybody with a little bit of mechanical um, I just experienced could do this. But yeah, man, so we are back together. Uh, so just make sure when you finish this though, uh, just degrees up so your hubs all that good stuff and then after your first time going through and doing some towing um i just definitely go and retorque everything but i'm going to go ahead and close this video out so take it easy um I'm yeah huh 